Hi everyone, welcome back to another one of my Sims 4 speed builds. Today, you'll know what I'm building if you have watched the Bridgerton series on Netflix. Um, obviously, if you haven't watched the series, don't worry, you're going to really still enjoy watching me make a beautiful Georgian mansion, which is absolutely huge. Um, but for those of you who have watched the series, um, today I'm building Lady Danbury's Manor, and I believe it's not actually given a name in the series, so I've named it Danbury Hall. Um, although I think halls are traditionally quite massive builds, but I thought that this was pretty, pretty sizable, so I think it merited being called a hall. But it is a Georgian property. Um, Bridgerton is set in the Georgian, in the Regency era, which is kind of like the late Georgian period. And um, I hope you liked the little intro that I made with the actual characters who live in this house. And um, they will also probably be available on the gallery soon for you to download as well. Uh, they do contain custom content, but I will leave that in their descriptions or something, or just message me and I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, so I had so much fun making this build. Uh, it took me a very, very long time, but I have to say I did kind of enjoy <laughs> making all of it. Um, I am absolutely obsessed with making period properties and historical builds. Um, it's kind of a theme on my channel, but um, so many of you love watching them and that means so much to me because it's great to be able to share stuff that um, you guys are so interested in as well as me. Um, so yeah, so this house is actually called the Holborn Museum and it's what they used when they filmed the series uh, and it's a museum in a town called Bath in the UK which has a lot of buildings that look like this and um, as far as I'm aware the museum was built in 1882 um, which is actually uh, like 70 odd years after Bridgerton was set. So Bridgerton was set in like 1813, I think. So it's quite a lot later. The times don't necessarily match up, but I still think it looks absolutely beautiful. And the way that they use it in the, um, in the series is just incredible. And I'm so obsessed with Bridgerton. I have to say, I kind of enjoy the second season a little bit more than the first, just because I don't know. I just, I want to be one of the ladies who wears the beautiful dresses and goes to the dance. I mean, I know it's not all amazing all the time. It seems quite stressful at times, but it would be kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I feel like lots of people who watch the series will also feel that they just wanna, they wanna experience that even just for a day to wear the beautiful gowns and be call, you know, be called Lady Danbury it would just be gorgeous. So. Anyway, um, I built the house out of this, it's built of this beautiful sandstone brick and I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, but the style of architecture is called neoclassical, which um, on the on the Google sphere says that basically it's a style of architecture which is like heavy, heavily emphasizes grandeur, so having these big grand buildings and also lots of like Roman or Greek kind of you know what like classical styles which is why it's called neoclassical because it's new classical so like the pillars and the arches at the front of the build here uh set with those big gorgeous bay windows maybe they're no they're sash windows i think um which are the ones that fold like upwards when you open them um so that is what the style of this building is called um and again, it is still a Georgian property, which is amazing and I love it. And I've built quite a few old style builds like this, actually. So if you're into this, then obviously watch the rest of the video because it gets even cooler on the inside. But maybe check out some of my other ones as well. Um, but yeah, so this was based off a museum in Bath. And actually, when we get onto it, the interior of the build was set in two different houses. Um, it was set in a house called the Babington House and the Wilton House. And um, they basically didn't film the like the scenes of this of the Bridgerton series in the same 
buildings, if that makes sense. So, you know, it was the exterior was filmed of one place and then all the interior was shot in another. Um, but the house and the exterior, except from the gardens, but the exterior and the interior, as far as I'm aware, is as accurate as I could make it to exactly as it is in the series. Um, of all the bits that I could kind of see, if that makes sense. So, um, I was a little bit limited with this just because of the size of the build and I built it on quite a small lot because I just don't think it needed a massive garden. But the things like the little columns on the side here, which you can see that I'm using the tool mod to make, um, kind of add to the individuality of the build. So I really wanted to like get those elements in that made it look really unique and really identifiable as the house from Bridgerton that is owned by Lady Danbury. Um, but yeah, so um, I went through, like I, I kind of like scrubbed through the entire series um, on, on Netflix and I kind of like screenshotted all the different angles of the rooms. So I'm pretty sure the dining room is the, the same, the hallway is the same. They never show the kitchen, so I had to make that up. And the same with, I think there's a study and a library which I made up in my head but the kind of what's it called like the drawing room the room where they have a lot of tea and talking is the same the hallway is the same um and the dressing room that belongs to the girls is also the same and obviously the look of the exterior is the same so it was definitely a challenge to try and make it look as similar as possible but one that i really really enjoyed and i'd absolutely love to do more of these kind of mashups between recreations and also um like you know having a bit of my own twist on things um it was really fun to kind of use the objects because we're quite limited in the sims obviously with what objects we can use so but i kind of enjoy trying to find things that look the same um so yeah a lot of the content that you will see in this build is by Felix Andre. I took the plunge and I became one of his Patreons and I am so happy. I literally was like squealing when I was looking at my computer when I downloaded everything because of how gorgeous his custom content is. And I've always had some of his sets, but now I have them all. And it's something that if you are into building, I would really recommend. And obviously if you want to download these builds, then um, it's so much better value for money than any Sims 4 pack I've ever built so gorgeous uh so useful so i'm gonna be using them in like all of my builds basically um so yeah so this hallway is one that you see quite a lot um it's the one where uh, i think edwina walks down at the start in her beautiful gorgeous dresses and they're gathered around the fireplace so it was quite a challenge to make and i made all the walls and the kind of layout and the floor plan off camera just because the video is already so long it's like nearly half an hour um which i didn't want to make any longer by just faffing around with the floor plan so um but i made some like platform thing with the stairs where it like wraps around um but i'm so i'm so 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 happy that with how similar it looks so yeah, um, in the kitchen as well, I obviously didn't have a guide. So I kind of just made up what I feel like a kitchen would look like at the time. Um, I feel like to be honest, a kitchen from the Regency era would be a lot bigger. Some of these huge homes have a lot of, have a lot of staff in them. And that's something you see throughout the series as well actually, is that like, there's always a, a kind of a, a doorman or, I don't know what they were called, <laughs> like a chambermaid or something waiting to be on hand, like a kind of a butler. Um, so normally there'd be like a lot more rooms for those people, like for the, the staff basically to stay in. Um, and the kitchen would have been huge because it would have been where they prepared all the banquets, which oh, I'm just listening to myself say this and it's like, would be such a dream. Um, but yeah so but i thought you know actually let's maybe modernize this a bit in the sims 4 we are not playing unfortunately as 
um, lords and ladies, although you can obviously get quite close to that, but you're not going to have a household with hundreds of staff. So I made it a much more usable kitchen. I used a lot of the Parisian set uh, by Felix Andre and I cluttered it up in this kind of like grey, like blue colour sort of thing and um, lots of old looking clutter. That's what I tried to go with the whole style of the house is that it looks, whilst it has an old like Georgian style to it, it can also be timeless. Um, I kind of wanted it to be somewhere that like you could have modern sims living there and it would be completely fine. Um, so yeah, hopefully that comes across because I worked really hard on this build and um, yeah, I'm super proud of it basically. And I hope that that comes across with literally how long I spent building it. Um, so I gave them these little, I used these like open Parisian doors throughout the whole build because I don't know, it just makes it look a lot more lived in and um, it adds a bit of, I don't know, a bit of spice, I guess, <laughs> to the rooms when the doors are kind of open. And um, so yeah, in the kitchen, there's a little laundry nook basically. Uh, where this where your sims can do their laundry because that is quite an old-fashioned task that you have to do wash the laundry hang it up um, So yeah, one of the rooms I actually also added was uh, one of the rooms on the down floor downstairs floor uh, Is a office a kind of an office study I don't know like waiting room I guess it's right next to the front door so I feel like maybe if your sims had like people coming over to do business with them they would bring them into this room where they would wait maybe have afternoon tea it's not as fancy as the drawing room upstairs um, which is the one that's a recreation from the series so it's just a slightly smaller room with an office and a desk and maybe it was where uh, like the lord or lady of the manor or lady Danbury in this case would do her accounting and things and managing her estates so yeah that's what i made this room for and i put lots of books in it um it is supposed to look like a very studious room but it's not a library because there is a huge library upstairs as you'll see in a bit and i'm absolutely in love with the library um i'd love to know if any of you are bookworms i made this because i love reading and I made the library as kind of like my dream library that I would want. If I could have any house and have a library in it, I feel like this one would be would be it. So yeah, and another thing I added in this kind of side room was a little decanter. This came from Harry and Felix, like the house of Harlux, Harlux. So many, so many H words, but it came from their Harlux set and I'm pretty sure tell me if i'm wrong but it it is a functional uh like bar so you can walk up to it and get drinks which is really cool um again i thought that maybe this was like a room that they would bring their business partners and stuff like that so that's where that's in there now we are moving on to the dining room which is again a scene well in one of the scenes in the movie and i'm pretty sure it's the scene where the grandparents the the sheffields come and meet their granddaughter for the first time and they have loads of beef and i'm not going to do any more spoilers but it's really cool um and it's a great scene and it really like oh it just changes it all up again but anyway so i tried to do my best to recreate this but again the in order to get the outside of the house looking the way I wanted it to, I did have to make some sacrifices by slightly changing the dimensions of the inside. Um, this is something where actually when they filmed it, they had a different outside of the house to the inside. So, you know, maybe the house that they filmed the interior in, either I think it was the Badminton or the Wilton house, like it was probably absolutely massive. So the rooms inside were huge, but it was just one of those things and I think I made it work and I'm super super happy with at least the vibe that comes off it. <laughs> so yeah, I put throughout all the house, I put all these statues and art and really lavish expensive looking furnishings. Um, and something that I thought was really sweet was actually to add these this dinner table which is like fully set up as if they're having 
as if they're having dinner um, because obviously in the in the series the scene is where they are having um, a really expensive like decadent meal so I wanted to recreate that and it was really fun and I used loads of debug items for that and it took an absolute lifetime to put all of those little glasses and forks and knives on the table but I feel like it looks kind of nice and it makes the space look a little bit more lived in as well other than having an empty dining table. It's definitely a trick I'm going to use in my future builds. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I probably could have just downloaded a dinner set, like a CC one off, off the internet, but I just, you know, I made it hard for myself, but it was great and it worked out really well. So, um, that's cool. So that's all set up and, um, yeah, I added these gorgeous, I think they came from, I used quite a lot from the Florence set, which is Felix Andres. Um, it has these gorgeous flower bouquets and also like the wallpaper the beautiful like um painted wallpaper so pretty i absolutely love it um and really helped the house like it really elevated it made it look extra expensive um again the upstairs like when you go up the stairs the little landing area is one that I didn't have any reference for the only thing that I could see it from was a screenshot that I had looking down the hallway like at this from from the end of the front at the front of the house so I had to kind of guess what would have been there but I don't know I feel like they would have had a little seating area maybe and just again some more statues and some artwork so that's what I put in there and it was quite a challenge to find items that looked different. I didn't want to use the same things over and over again throughout the whole build, but I also wanted it to look um, like the same theme, if that makes sense. So I tried my best to kind of change it up a little bit here and there, um, but I do admit that some of the, the rooms use like the same you know, let's use the flower bouquet, for example, like it's used over and over again. Um, the flowers I wasn't too worried about, actually, because I think it's something that when they were in that period of history, they would quite often have flowers and they would get them remade like for the whole house at one time over and over again. So that was quite common, I think, um, for them to have the same like style of flower. It was one of the ways they decorated their houses. Um, but yeah, there is also a library in the house and like I said, this is one of my favourite rooms. I feel like if I was a Georgian lady who would wear my beautiful dresses, I would be one of those ones who read a lot of the time and uh, possibly played the piano, which is why I add a piano, I add a piano downstairs. Um, there's also a chess table outside um, because you know, if they're, they're very, very rich. <laughs> the people who live here are extremely wealthy and obviously the Bridgerton series is set kind of looking at the high, I think it's called the high society of London. So, you know, they've got to have some form of cleverness about like to them. So I gave them a chess set because in The Sims, I don't know, you're kind of smart if you know, is it logic? I think it's the logic skill, <laughs> but yeah. So one of the rooms I had a lot of fun recreating was the drawing room, I think. And this is used in a lot of scenes throughout the series. Um, it's used for like lots of tea parties and just lots of conversations between different characters. I think it tends to be where visitors come. So like when there's a visitor to the house, they will come into this room as opposed to the slightly smaller rooms. I'm guessing that's because the furniture is kind of the grandest in here. It's really expensive, lavish furnishings. So I can kind of understand like if I owned this house, I would want all my visitors to come into this room. Um, but there's these gorgeous patterned like gold trim chairs and sofas and like these big windows which let so much sunlight come through uh and yeah it's just gorgeous and again like the room is a little bit more cramped than i would have wanted it to be like even just one or two tiles wider would have been great 
but I had to work with what I was given on the inside. Um, and I think it looks like if you look at the, um, the comparison between what it looks like in the, on Netflix versus, um, on my build, it looks really similar. So I was so pleased with that. And yeah, so I gave them lots of little cakes because I was like, okay, well, they often have afternoon tea here. So it might be a good idea to like set it up again because I set the um, I set the dining table up to be having dinner. So I thought, well, it would be fun to set the the kind of drawing room up as if they were having afternoon tea. Um, it's very British, and I think I still I still go to my grandma's house to this day and have afternoon tea with her. Albeit it's kind of like like a Mr. Kipling chocolate bar or something. Um, it's not anywhere near as fancy as they used to have it, but it's a very British thing. So I'm glad that they got that lots in the series. Um, and yeah, so now I'm moving on to the final floor of the house. I really didn't have that many reference photos for this at all. In fact, the only rooms that I did is pretty much the dressing room, which can be a third bedroom if you want it to be. I left it as the dressing room because it's again one of those iconic rooms where loads of scene ha scenes happen in the series. So I wanted to include that, but by all means just add a bed in there and it can become an extra bedroom. Um, I thought it was a huge house anyway, so it didn't need an extra bedroom, but uh, that's what I went with. Um, so yeah, I was just decorating this hallway with some of those beautiful flowers, the orchids, again from Felix Andre, and um, I used this Parisian fireplace pretty much throughout the house, um, and I wasn't too bothered that I was using it lots and lots, mainly because I feel like that's quite characteristic of, <laughs> of Georgian properties, is that they do have a similar look throughout them. Um, and yeah, I think the whole theme of this house is that it's very pink and if you've seen the show you will know that actually the pink that I have used is a lot more muted than what is actually in the like the real house and the reason I did this was because in the show that pink is so in your face I I really thought it would just be too overpowering in the sims so I used a slightly more like blush colour on all the walls and you know I used variations of different wallpapers um, but yeah so if you're looking at this and going oh it's not the traditional like Danbury house colours which is that really bright pink it's because I really wanted to but it just it looked way too intense it was just way too much so I didn't do that unfortunately but um so the little uh dressing room I'm gonna call it for the Sharma sisters so for Edwina and Kate Sharma um, I left some little teacups and this little dressing table that they use um, I also had a lot of fun making that custom sofa bed canopy it doesn't look exactly like the one in the show obviously but I used a canopy from one of Felix Andre's packs and like draped it over some I don't know what they're called, but the, the little things that you stick on the outside of the building. Um, and I pretended to use them on the inside. And I think it looks really cool. It, it gives off a really good look, like it is a canopy above the bed. Um, and I know that the sisters have a lot of conversations on in this room and it's where they get ready. So yeah, that was something that I really wanted to include. Um, and yeah, so I also, because I didn't put a bed in that room, I did add a double, like a twin room in the room next door, just because I didn't want it to be, you know, a house that could literally only house two Sims. I wanted it to be big enough that you could have quite a few Sims living here. Um, but you could obviously add, um, you could add a kid's room and make it into a bunk bed uh, and have even more Sims, but it's completely up to you. Uh, so I added these gorgeous coloured, um, blush coloured like beds, twin beds, which came from university, I think. And I really wish that they came in more swatches because it's such a cool bed to use in a period property, like in a historical house. Um, but unfortunately, 
there is literally only a few nice usable swatches um which i feel like is kind of a thing with ea builds but anyway that's what with, with ea um objects sorry but anyway <laughs> that's a debate for a different day um so now i'm finally on to uh the best bedroom i think i've ever made i absolutely love this bedroom it is lady danbury's bedroom and i added this awesome canopy above the bed and it's huge and it's even got its very own little fireplace and seating area and um i was debating whether or not to make her bedroom the like a big bedroom for the girls but i thought you know what no she is the lady of the house she owns this place so she is even though we don't see it in the program she's got to have a nice bedroom so that's what i did and i gave her like a bookshelf and lots of those gorgeous candelabras and paintings and just everything is in her bedroom um because you know if i had enough money to own a house like this i would <laughs> probably selfishly make my bedroom the nicest one too i can't blame her but anyway yeah so um i'm finally on to the bathroom now and i didn't show you the bathroom downstairs it's very similar i just thought it kind of was taking way too long anyway so i cut it out unfortunately but if you go ahead and download the build you will see exactly what i mean um it's got a freestanding bathtub in i think this was something that was really common in the time because they didn't maybe they didn't have plumbing i think they didn't have plumbing um you know a couple of hundred years ago so this is what they had to do and they had to fill up their bathtubs every time so i kind of wanted to recreate that um, and you could totally try and live off grid. But anyway, this build is really nearly done. I hope you love the screenshots and I hope you've really enjoyed watching this. Bye guys, see you soon.